and, and they are full systems. It is this rifle, which is the Model 700 long range, uh, chambered in 30 out 6 with the optic system. It is a uh, uh, Model 700 SPS tactical in 308 with a 20 inch barrel. And the BFI Bushmaster Varminter 24 inch barrel in 223 slash 556. So we'll come back in a minute to the verse. What is a 2020? It is a, dig it is a digital optic system. It starts out with a 3 to 21 digital optic on the front. Okay. There's a sunshade on here, comes off a little quick turn, bayonet mount. It's got a filter in it, which if you look through, you say, there's nothing there. And if you hold it in angle, you'll see a little red tint to it. It's because primarily what it's cutting out is infrared. So in bright daylight, like we'll have today, we'll be taking this off. But at dawn and dusk, as that image starts to get a little dark, you just simply a little eighth turn, pull it off, and that screen will brighten right up. Down below, you've got laser rangefinder. This is capable 750 yards. And what do I mean by that? It is 750 yard capable on an object with the reflectivity of a white-tailed deer. Okay. If you look at rangefinders, you see that some of them are fairly honest and they'll actually rate it several different distances and they'll say, you know, max reflectivity, it's a thousand <coughs> yards. Well, the reality is on a, on a deer, they'll come back a couple lines later and say it's only 600 yards. Okay. Some of them don't tell you that, they'll just say it's a thousand yards. This is 750 yards <coughs> on a white-tail. Down below, you've got a temperature sensor and a barometric pressure sensor. There's an accessory jack underneath, and there's a magnetometer, which is a fancy name for a compass. I want to have a compass. We'll get back to that. As you move back down in the center, if you've ever opened up a computer, anybody ever opened up a computer? You got a motherboard in there? There's a motherboard in here. They cut it into strips, put flex connectors on, and they fold it all up so that it actually forms like a T shape and it fits down in the center here. There's a total of seven processors on that board, okay? and that forms the image processing, the tracking capabilities, because this can track moving targets up to 10 miles an hour. Uh, it handles all the user interface, the ballistic calculator, which actually I will call a ballistic computer, because the solution it provides goes well beyond any other ballistic calculator that's out there. And, and again, it gets back to all those sensors I just talked about. Up top, you've got battery compartments. Obviously, the thing's electronic, so you have to have batteries. There's one on either side. Uh, the batteries are lithium ion, and they're good for about an hour and a half a piece. And that's affected by temperature, the number of times you actually lays, because that's a power draw. So, in this kind of environment, we're going to be putting different shooters on, they're going to be lasing a lot. That'll drop off a little bit, uh, not too much. Do they come with? Okay, when you open up the package, Sorry. there'll be four batteries. Okay, so a total of six hours. You've got three buttons on the top, okay, what we call the tag button. You've got a rocker here for calling and inputting wind. And that's simply done in miles per hour. So, anybody here, uh, a regular, you know, long range shooter? Okay, shoot rifle in any kind of range. Typically, if you're, if you're doing that now, Calling wind is a bit of a science. You, you have to know the range, you have to know the magnitude of the wind, all the rest of that. Well, because we already know the range from the laser rangefinder, all we're going to ask the shooter to do is to estimate the, the, the cross component of the wind, okay, the, the perpendicular part of it, from left to right or right to left in miles per hour. I got about a five mile an hour right to left. Okay. The computer handles everything else beyond that. Okay, so all you got to do is be able to judge the approximate magnitude of the wind. Your zoom control. You've got a focus for the optic itself. Okay, so the, the optics, the lens is on to the image sensor. And then in the back, do this, we're not pointing at anybody. You've got a power button and a mode button. That's it. Five buttons control the entire thing. Which to me is one of the amazing parts about this whole system is that the, the user interface has shrunk down to five buttons. Uh, you have a ring here on the ocular, which allows you to focus your eye onto a computer display. This is a VGA 640 by 480 computer screen in here. 
And when you look in this, you're looking at a computer screen. Because of that, there is zero power lines. Doesn't exist. Okay, so that goes out the window. The iBox is a lot bigger. You can you can look you can be left, right, you can be up, down, you can be in close, you can be a back. Doesn't matter. You're looking at a computer screen. So you'll adjust the focus here so that the computer generated graphics on that in that heads up display are nice and crisp for you. And then you'll adjust the scene focus. Once that scene focus is set, you really don't, don't have to monkey with it. Um, has it work? Very simply. Press the power button, power's up. In about two to four seconds, you'll have a traditional mill dot reticle zeroed at 100 yards. Okay, so in the situation of you're walking out to your stand or you're blind, there's a lion running through the tent, you know, through the camp, and you need it right now, hit that power button, and by the time you get that rifle up, that screen will be coming up live. Another second or so, you'll have a reticle to shoot from. It's gonna power up at 3x, right? 3 to 21 is the zoom. Once it goes through a full diagnostic check of all the, the features in the computer system, if you press the mode button again, you're going to move into advanced mode. And it's going to be advanced target mode. The third mode is advanced movers. The only real What's difference the between mode? advanced what? Movers. Movers. So the only real difference between advanced target and advanced mover is movers will calculate the speed of a moving target. Well, how does it do that? Very simply, uh, if anybody's ever used uh, Photoshop or CorelDRAW or any of those, and, and you've got a, a picture with a bunch of faces, and you can click on a face and it'll find the outline of the face, right, if you want to get rid of the background. This does the same thing. When you tag a target, it's able to carve that target out relative to the static world that is the rest of the background. Also in the center here are three uh, inertial measurement units or gyroscopes. So the computer can tell if the rifle's moving up, down, left, right, how fast it's moving, it can carve that image out from the static background, it knows the range, and it can calculate how fast the target's moving. So it can automatically calculate ballistic lead. It's all done for you. So what you do very simply is when you first go into advanced mode, you're going to see a, a blue oval, okay, it's semi-transparent, so you can see through it. There's a white dot in the center. That white dot is your aim point or tag point. You put that where you want to have your impact be, hit the tag button, it's going to automatically fire the laser range finder, it's going to measure the air temperature, the air pressure, so from there it's going to calculate air density, it, you have told it which ammunition you're using, it knows the cant and inclination of the rifle, it knows which direction you're pointing in a compass point. Why would it need to know which direction you're pointing in a compass point? Because it also uh, corrects for Coriolis effect. Okay, everyone know what Coriolis is? Spinning of the Earth. The Earth is moving. All right, so when you're pointing due north, due south, and the farther you get in latitude, the more important it becomes. Your target is actually moving relative to you. So the bullet of the Earth is actually like this. So is that really important? By in and of itself, not really. You get to longer ranges, it starts to add up. If you start to add in things like Magnus Effect Drift, you know what Magnus Effect Drift is? That's due to the spin of the bullet. Spin, spin drift. of the bullet and crosswind. It's the interaction spin of the bullet and crosswind. Spin drift. Okay. All these are factors that that computer is going to take into account when it does that calculation. So individually, you know, people come back and say, well, Coriolis is a small effect. Well, yeah, but we add that to spin drift. We add that to Magnus Effect Drift. You get out 300, 400 yards. Those start to add up, and now you're starting to talk deviations from your point of aim in inches. Okay, this starts to become a miss. Cant of the rifle is a huge reason people miss. There's a measurement of that for it, for cant built into the system, automatically compensates. So I'll put that dot on my target, I'm going to hit the tag button. What's going to happen is virtually instantaneously you'll see a blue reticle appear. Okay, it's in the form of an X and it's going to drop down or go up or go left or go right and it's going to show you with all those factors accounted for where your actual point of impact is going to be. you ever miss with this? Absolutely. Oh, oh really? Absolutely. <clears throat> because you still are in control of the trigger. Yeah. Right? So if I tag an animal and I go over and shoot at the tree, I'm going to hit the tree. <laughs> uh, okay, there, there, there's no connection between the optic and the rifle itself. You are in full control of the trigger at all times. 
the air temperature, the air pressure, barometric pressure, and the distance, the, the, the range, lock in when you hit the tag button. Every other factor is live. So if you're tracking an animal and you're having to tilt the rifle and go like this, 54 times a second it reads all those sensors. And that solution that it shows you is updated 54 times a second. Now to your eye that is invisible. It's not, it, it doesn't jerk as it moves. 54 times a second is fast enough that your brain will perceive that as a, as a smooth motion. But because it's updating so fast, you may not even perceive that it's moving. But if you want to prove to yourself that it actually does, and that includes input for wind. So if you want to, again, prove it, what you can do is you can get down or get on target, tag it, and simply reach up and start inputting wind. And you'll see that reticle start to drift over as it's adding that correction for wind 54 times a second. It rereads that input and makes that correction. So all those other factors are continuously updated until you take the shot. Your job, come back on target and squeeze the trigger. Display good trigger control, and yeah, then you'll hit. Okay. I've taken folks out, myself included, and, and I'm not a rifle shooter. Okay, I, I've got reasonably good mechanical skills, but you put me out at a 400-yard target, and I'm going to take 10 shots to figure out where the hell I'm, I'm walking it into. On this unit, I can be on paper on the first shot. Okay. It, it's that simple. What else does it do? Real quickly. When you hit the tag button, a video recording starts. Now that is optional. You can, by default, it's turned on. You can go into the setup and turn it off, but it'll start video recording, and it will continue to video record until the tag is lost. And there's four primary reasons you lose a tag, uh, but one of them is you took the shot. You know, if you take a shot, it'll continue to record for a preset time. You can adjust that between 10 and 30 seconds. It goes into internal memory. It's two hours of internal memory built into this. For video. There's also a microphone back here so it picks up. Be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so video in here is great. It has a Wi-Fi server built into it. Okay, people like to correct me all the time. They say, no, you mean Bluetooth. No, I mean Wi-Fi. It is actually a Wi-Fi server built into the unit. So I can turn on that Wi-Fi. By default, the Wi-Fi is turned off. And to turn it on, you simply press the power button. Okay, just a momentary press of the power button, and the Wi-Fi will toggle on and off. Okay, so on, off, on, off. So I turn the Wi-Fi server on. I can pull up my iPad, I pull up my iPhone, I pull up an Android device if I've preloaded uh, the, the software to do this. And it's available free on the Apple App Store or Google Play, I guess is what they call theirs. And I can hook on to this scope, or optic, and I can see in real time, wirelessly, what the shooter's seeing. We'll pull it up on my iPad. Yeah, I've got an iPad mini with me. We'll set that up next to it. <laughs> and you can see how good your fellow workers are at Ooh. rifle control. I mean, I can tell, I've, I've done enough of these, I can tell right away whether somebody's a rifle shooter or not. You know, if that crosshair's going like this, or, you know, nice and smooth walks up. What does that allow you to do? Right, I'm going to take my son out to the range, I'm going to teach him how to shoot. I can sit there and coach him in real time. Nice. I'm out with my friend, honey. I can see what he's seeing. I can share that shot with him right there, real time, live. What's the resolution of the video? Uh, VGA, 640 by 480. Okay. Um, if I'm a guide, I, I used this example earlier. Okay. No, that's a cow. Don't shoot the cow. The deer is off to the left. <laughs> okay, because I can see real time. And I've actually heard, we, we did a hunt back in July. Uh, with some riders, and I was just wandering over uh, as we're, they were cleaning the animals, and the guides had figured this out. The one guy who was uh, with one of the animals that was harvested said to the others, he said, this was so cool. He said, I was able to see for the first time what this guy was doing. He said, I had the iPad, and I'm watching, and I'm walking him through, because there were three animals out there that day. And he said, he was on the wrong one to start. And he said, I was able to tell him, no, go to the left. That's a better animal. That's the one you want. He said, I've never been able to do that before. 